Hello, welcome back to part two of the Tile Rules uh, tutorial series. So in the previous video we talked about prefab creation and tile rule setup and in this video we're actually going to start painting. So make sure you have the tile rules uh, tool button active here in the inspector and uh, then you need to create a tile rule grid uh, in which you're going to be painting tiles. So we have this tile rule grid creation settings here and uh, the first field that we have to fill in is called tile rule profile and this is the profile that we created uh, in the previous video which is called ms underscore dungeons so let's go ahead and um, select it uh, we're going to leave the neighbor radius to one and uh, we have to specify the cell size so the cell size uh, we can get that from uh, the prefab previews if i hover one of the prefab previews you notice that it gives me the model size of the prefab uh, in this case it's 434. Now uh, it is important to pick a prefab that doesn't have any decorations on the sides such as railings and pillars that we have in this case. Uh, and so I picked the uh, TR cross prefab which sits in the middle which doesn't have any decorations. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, and, and write 434. All right, then I'm going to give the grid a name and I'm going to call it dungeon. And I'm going to click on uh, create grid. Okay, now once I do that we get this uh, grid in the scene and we also get this object in the hierarchy view called dungeon yeah this is the grid that we created and when you paint tiles inside the grid all the tiles will go will be attached as children to this uh, to this object okay now before we move on it is important to remember that the grid that you see here in the scene view uh, when the, the tile rule uh, tool is active is different from the grid that you use for the other spawn tools such as modular snapping segments modular walls and so on yeah, so all these other tools uh, or these other spawn tools use the scene grid while the uh, tile rule spawn tool uses the, the you know the grid that you create here all right now uh, you can see when I move the mouse we get this uh, nice little green box this is our brush and if I hold down the left click mouse uh, left, if I hold down the left mouse button and uh, move the mouse we can actually paint tiles okay now let's talk about uh, all the different tools that uh, we have at our disposal here and uh, the different types of brushes that are available. So uh, the first tool that we uh, that we can use is called Paint and this is the one that uh, we've actually just used. Uh, then we have Ramp Paint which is a special kind of paint tool that allows you to paint ramps. And uh, we, have, uh, we have Erase uh, which allows you to erase tiles. And finally we have connect okay now um, we're gonna talk about ramp paint and connect in a se in, 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 in another video uh, now let's talk about the different brushes so for the paint and erase tools we have three different types of brushes that we can use uh, the first brush is called the box brush and it's uh, it's this uh, little uh, green box that uh, we've been using so far uh, left click to spawn or just uh, hold down the left mouse button and drag uh, you can also hold down the control key and use the mouse scroll wheel to increase the size of the brush. Um, you can hold down shift and scroll to increase the height. And finally you can uh, hold down control alt and scroll in order to offset the brush along the y axis. Right? Now, um, also another useful thing to do in order to change the y offset is to hold down control alt and left click in order to pick a height value from uh, from the uh, from one of the tiles you can also um, so for example if you set the height to quite a large value if you want to go back to the grid if you want to uh, make sure the brush resides on the grid you can hold down ctrl alt and left click on the grid and that will push it back all right next we have the flexi box brush which is um, it's kind of like the box brush but yeah it's different in the sense that uh, you can no longer hold down ctrl and uh, scroll in order to change the size. You change the size after you left click by moving the mouse. Yeah, so this is how you change the size. Uh, the height can still be uh, controlled using the shift key. So if I hold down shift and scroll, I can change the height. Uh, and again, control alt to offset along the Y axis. And finally, we have the so-called segments brush, uh, which is very useful for creating uh, pathways. Uh, so if I left click, this will always have uh, so you cannot you can't use uh, with the segments brush you can't use control and scroll yeah? but you can use uh, shift and uh, scroll to increase the height and again control alt to offset along the y-axis and if you left click it will this is basically like a line painting tool 
Uh, so uh, left click again to add a new segment, left click, left click, left click. And then finally, when you want to commit, you have to hold down shift and uh, left click. Yeah, so this will create something like this. Now, if you if you want to go back, like if you make a mistake, if you don't like one of the segments that you, you just created, you can hold down shift and right click to remove the last segment. And that will give you a chance to, re to, you know, to repair any uh, mistakes that, that, that you did. You can also press escape to, to cancel. All right, so now let's uh, let's go ahead and paint uh, a simple environment. Nothing too fancy, just um, just a little uh, environment. So I'm gonna first I'm gonna scroll down to my uh, grid item here in the in the inspector. I'm gonna click on the small um, X button to clear the grid. Yeah, that will erase all the tiles inside the grid. Also, uh, what I like to do is um, I will I will enable mirroring. Yeah, so if you expand the grid item, you have this uh, toggle here called mirroring enabled. Uh, you can also press Ctrl Q to enable the mirror, uh, and yeah, it's this is a feature you don't have to use mirroring if you if you don't want. Of course, it's it's not mandatory, but it's it's a feature that I kind of like to use. So uh, we could have, for example, two planes active at the same time, and we could paint, erase. But I'm just gonna leave a single plane in this case. I'm gonna leave the red plane so that we can mirror along the uh, along the y along the x axis. Okay, so let's go. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's see what we can uh, come up with. I'm gonna use the flexi box brush. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm gonna control Alt, left click, Shift to increase the height. Let's uh, erase some of these guys. Okay, yeah, so a uh, nice little environment. Uh, I think we're gonna use this for uh, the following videos too, for the next videos that we're gonna we're gonna create uh, that are gonna be available. All right, so um, now the last thing that I want to do is. I want to talk to you about an issue that can occur because if we take a look at these prefabs that uh, that we're using, notice that the prefabs, for example, the TR bridge prefab, has these pillars um, right where it connects to the adjacent tiles. Now, for example, if two uh, two of these prefabs connect to each other, then there's going to be two sets of pillars uh, right where they right where they connect, right? So this can lead to rendering artifacts. Let me see if I can actually spot one here in the scene. If not, I'll try to... Ah, there you go. Okay, yeah. So here we have a T-junction. Yeah, this is a T-junction um, rule and then we have a turn rule. And both of these guys have pillars where they connect to adjacent tiles. And notice that when I move the camera, we get this sort of uh, flickering effect because there are actually two pillars in the same position that are fighting over which one will get rendered, right? So there's no automatic way of fixing this. Uh, when you paint, this this issue will, will always occur when you're using these sort of prefabs. Uh, however, there is this button here in the inspector. Uh, it's called Fix Overlaps. So if you click on this button, what it will do is it will detect this um, it will detect this issue and it will hide the renderers of the objects that, that overlap, right? So now if we take a look at this, uh, this guy notice that the flickering effect has occurred because the render of the, of the other pillar has been, uh, has been hidden, has been uh, disabled. Right, now, uh, this is, a, as I said, this is a manual step. It's not done automatically. So what this means is that if you start painting again, uh, new tiles will be spawned, some of the old tiles will be erased and so on, and the, the issue will, uh, will be brought back. So what this means is that you should only you should you should use this uh, at the end of the uh, of the when when you're done with the game level when you're satisfied with the result uh, just click on this button and it will uh, fix these uh, these overlaps and of course you can you can click on this button as many times as you wish there's there's no problem because uh, when you're gonna work be working on your level it's in the beginning it's gonna be difficult to tell when you uh, when you're actually done with it uh, you'll always probably find. You know ways to make changes to it and and so on. So just click on this button when you get close to um, a 
desired uh, final outcome. All right, so uh, that's it for this video. Now, in the next video, we're going to talk about ramps and uh, platforms. Up until this point, we've been using these uh, rules, which are called uh, standard. Yeah, so this there, there's this field right here, which sits below the uh, tile, uh, the um, uh, cell button grid. Uh, currently, it says standard for all the for all the rules that we defined. But there are two uh, two rule types that we haven't discussed yet: platform and ramp. And that's uh, that's what we're going to do in the next video. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you. Bye.